These are all the supplies you need to make Newt Scamander's um, watch strap. First we have um, some brown pleather. I usually keep this on stock. This came out of a scrap bin for $2 a yard. So anytime you find scrap pleather, buy it because it is always useful. Um, I have a pin for marking on the black back of the pleather. I have a quilting ruler so I can mark out the desired length and width of um, pleather. This is very useful. I highly recommend getting one. Um, we have these clips to attach the um, watch to the strap. I have these um, jewelry fastenings. These are um, the loop ends to a um, bracelet and this will be used to uh, connect the watch strap into the vest for Newt's Commander. And I also have D-rings that will be used to connect um, the fastenings to the watch strap. And also this is the thread that I used for the vest. Um, I'm going to reuse it for the stop, top stitching on um, the watch strap. It's always good to have multi-purpose thread that you can use for many, many projects. And um, all of these fastenings came from Michaels. So uh, that's where you can find those in the jewelry section. Um, and that is all we need for this project today. Oh, also a pair of scissors. These are fabric scissors. Um, I use them for fabric and nothing else or else they will get dull. So those are also needed for this project. Okay, a few other supplies that you need that I forgot. Um, you're gonna need some wire and this will just be to attach the um, fastenings onto the D-rings, some wire cutters to cut the um, to cut the wire and some pliers just to make um, the rings out of the wire. And now it's time to get started. Now what you're seeing me do is measure out the width of the watch band. You're going to need to measure your D-rings. Mine ended up being a little over three quarters of an inch. So I marked out three quarters of an inch with my ruler and cut it out. You're going to want it to be slightly smaller than the D-ring just so the D-rings can slide on and off and help you with um, the making of the watch chain. So next you will need to take the pleather strip that you've already cut and put the D-rings on it and you're going to be measuring the vest for the desired length of the watch strap. It should go from the second button down into the welt pocket. And you will see me here, I'm just measuring with um, the straps. Uh, the vest that I have is the Simplicity Pattern. Um, it is 6839. It's a very good pattern to use um, for any of your vest. I highly recommend it. Um, so what I'm doing is just adjusting the strap back and forth just to make sure that it is the desired length. And once I figured out the desired length, I'm going to use my pen and I'm going to mark where it's folded over just so when I put it back together, I will know the correct sizing. Um, now you're going to take it and you're going to use uh, your sewing machine with your um, gold thread for the top stitching. You can use another color of thread if you desire. I just like the way the gold looks. Um, I'm lining the strap up with the very edge of my foot just to make sure I am sewing a straight line. You might also notice there's a little tape line on my machine. I like to measure out my seam widths just so I know that I'm sewing a straight line every time and I have precise garments. Um, so you're going to sew all the way through. Make sure you backstitch at the front and the back of the seam. This will keep it from unraveling. So now you're going to repeat the step on the other side, making sure that you line everything up when you're top stitching. You really, really want to make sure that everything is lined up and precise because these stitches are going to be 
shown. They're not going to be hidden on the inside of your garment or your project. Now that you have both sides top stitched, it is time to assemble your watch band. You're going to take your metal D-rings and you're going to slide them on either side of your strap. And you're also going to use the marking you made earlier to make sure you're getting your sizing correctly. Um, when you take that other end and fold it over, you're actually going to make a little quarter of an inch fold in order to make sure that all of the raw edges are encompassed within the watch strap itself. Here I'm using a little bit of shoe goo. You can also use um, super glue, whatever you have on hand. Um, I'm just using this to tack down the um, watch band so it makes it easier to sew. Um, I'm doing this because clips are inconvenient in the machine and if you were to use pins it would make holes that you can't get out later so um, the glue just helps keep everything stuck together so that you can um, sew a nice clean stitch and just make sure everything lines up perfectly. Um, now you're going to take it and you're going to put it in your sewing machine and you're going to be very very careful to top stitch over exactly over the um, stitch that you have making sure nothing wiggles and moves around on you um, you might want to leave glue a little more time to set um, I made it work but you can um, use a little bit more time um, and I'm just very very carefully lining up the previous um, top stitching seam line so that I will get a clean seam at the end. And you're just going to sew and you're going to make sure um, to just stay right in line with that seam. And you're just gonna wanna make sure you're sewing nice and slow and just keeping it perfectly in line with your previous stitch. As you get close to the end, you're going to want to slow down and you're going to back stitch right before you hit the D-ring just to close off that stitch and make sure it's nice and sturdy and we'll keep everything together. And once you have completed this, you will um, repeat the process for the other side. Now that you've completed your stitching on both sides, you have a nice, stable, sturdy watch band. Um, you're going to cut off any excess strings, and I also went through and cut off any overlap that was exposed just to make sure you have a nice, clean, finished piece. <laughs> 